All right, so now we have quite a few requests here. We have two requests. We are logging in, we're getting an order ID and we're sending an order. And it's come to the point that we write some tests to make sure that everything works the same on the long run. And I can assure this is pretty easy to do. So have a look at this send order request. We are sending here all this information and the server is answering back with the same information that we're sending. And we want to make sure that everything still works the same, the same that we think it should work. And for that, let's have a look and write some tests. And here under the test tab, again, you'll see this panel with snippets. And one of the most basic tests that you can write is to test if the status code is 200. Now, in 90% of the cases, the status code will be 200. There are some slight variations of it, like 201 or 202. But generally, when the server is giving you a status 200, it means that everything is okay. So it makes sense in this case to check that the status is 200. And there's a snippet for that. And once I click this, this code will be generated and it says that that status is 200. So let me submit this. And once I do that, you will see here that the test results tab are filled and you have here status is 200. And, and for whatever reason, if the status is not 200, I'm changing here the address a bit so that it's not 200. So it's 404 in this case we'll see here that the test will fail. So it's pretty easy to get started with that. Now, in case you have a different status code, all you have to do is to change this value here. And otherwise, don't worry about the rest of the syntax. Let's take a look at more advanced stuff. Now, let's first start and check that the customer ID is the same that we think it is. And for that, simply do the following. Again, there's another snippet here, and the snippet is called JSON value check. And this does the following. First of all, it parses the response body, and we did that in the past, and save this to this object, no problem. And then it writes this expect function here, and this is the assertion that it's taking place. And we need to make get it to run. So the, we'll do the following. We get back in the... Um, we get back this response and the first thing that we encounter is JSON here. We'll have JSON data that JSON because this is the first property. And then nested inside this object, we have the second property that is customer ID. So we'll say here dot customer ID. The space is not needed. And we want to say customer ID equals, uh, let's say for example, 24 for now. We're going to send and the test will fail because it expected 5 to equal 24. Because the customer ID is changing all the time, we cannot have a hard coded value here. But in case there is a hard coded value, we can use a hard coded value. So for that reason, we need to use a method that gets this global variable. And the syntax is quite similar to the way you set a global variable. And to get a global variable, you see here a snippet. Just a second, get a global variable. And it's quite easy. So the global variable will be customer ID. And I'm just going to copy this inside here instead of 24. So this will give the current value for the customer ID. And it will check it against what was parsed from the response. Quite easy. Once again, let's give this test a proper name and for me a proper name would be check customer ID. And it's working. That's, that's quite great. And my tip for you is every time, make sure that your tests fail. I know this sounds pretty simple, but it's easy to get carried away on building complicated tests and scenarios and not making actually sure that the tests you are writing fail. So in this case, I'm gonna simply change the customer ID to customer ID X, just that the property isn't the same anymore. And now you will see here that the test failed. So this is a good thing that the test failed. And the same I can do with the value. I can change the value or I can change something different about the request. I can even make the request invalid. 
and submit this and then it should fail okay so make sure remember that always make your tests fail after you've written them now we are checking the status code we are checking that the customer id is the specific one now let's do an even more advanced assertion and let's check if the product ids are the ones that we submitted so where are they let's see this again so here are the product ids now this is getting even a bit more complicated we have the response we have json then and then we have products and products is an array and we want to check that product id is here and it's 3000 so how do we gonna do that let's go back to the tests and figure it out now most of the tests will be pretty similar to the previous one so let's copy and paste that i'm gonna say here check product ids and we're parsing the response body and what are we expecting well let's figure out the path first every time you're not sure about the path to something use go step by step go object by object use console log and figure it out where you're doing something wrong if you cannot get a value that you're looking for in the console it doesn't make any sense to write a test okay so i'm having here json and then products and then we have an array and we want to check the product id so how do we do that so we have json data that json that products and because this is an array in order to access elements from an array we have to use these square brackets and the first element in the javascript array has the key zero and then we want to check the product id should be 3000 I'm going to say here to equal 3000 and we have three tests so we're checking the product the first product id so let's see the second product id the second product ID is 2000 that's great so okay the test is failing and this makes sense why does it make sense because in the first one we had product zero and then the second product in this array is product one so this syntax we get a product and then property is a property of that product so the first one is 3000 the second one is 2000 all tests passed see you next time bye bye and just click here to continue with the next video and subscribe right here below